All right, so today we are getting our girls their CD and T. They are due to kid. She's this is Mocha. She's our first one that's due to kid. You can see she's starting to get her little udder. She's a first freshener, so she gets pretty not happy when I mess with her udder. So she's pretty wide for her size. She's a Nigerian dwarf. We're definitely curious to see how many babies that she has in her. While I've got her on the stand, I'm going to go ahead and check her ligaments. They're still there. Ligaments are like, they just feel like little pencils in there. They are a lot softer than they were. Uh, they were very pronounced. And now they're kind of squishy. So she's technically not at 145 days until the 9th of March. Uh, they can sometimes kid as early as 140 days. That's when the babies are viable. So as long as she holds out to that 140 day mark, which would be this Thursday, I'm happy. Um, but hopefully it'd be great if she would hold out to at least the 145 day mark. But she is definitely a lot squishier in her ligaments. So hopefully, we definitely don't want her kidding before Thursday. She doesn't have any milk in her udder, so that's a plus. And it's still kind of small, but she is a first freshener, so that might that's not always an indicative of what's going to be happening. So as long as she holds out to the 140-day mark, then we know these babies should be okay. So got her up on the stand. She's getting some treats. We're going to give their monthly selenium as well. So they're a miniature breed. So they get the two cc's so we just well there went the cap we just dial up the two cc mark I know. she has some grain in her mouth so she's not but she'll lick it all off and she'll get it with her grain so selenium is really important for goats, especially if you don't have it in the area. Um, here where we live, there's just not enough selenium. They have to have selenium. So we give it every month. They also have their free choice minerals that are in their stall. So we also have, I already pre-measured out. CDT, it does not matter what their age, what their size, it does not matter. They always get a 2cc of CDT. It's an annual booster. It's going to be interesting trying to find where she's got some extra skin because she's so tight right now because she's so pregnant. By giving the CDT before they kid, it helps protect the babies until they can be vaccinated as they get older, so. Just trying to find some extra skin here. If you don't, it's a sub-Q injection, so you don't, do go just under the skin, but if you don't get a big enough pocket of extra skin, they can get little abscesses sometimes, and that's the last thing we want. So a lot of times right here behind this front leg is where I found that I can get the best pinch of skin to give their shots. This is just rubbing alcohol. I'm just gonna wipe down the area, clean it really good, clean it as best I can. Just rubbing this area here. She doesn't have a lot there, but it's we're gonna work with what we got. Just using a 22 gauge needle. You can get these at Tractor Supply. They don't really care for this. Oh, she's not going to jump on me this time. <laughs> and I just kind of give it a little rub. Make sure there's no bulge. Sometimes you do feel a little bulge. She's got a little bulge, but she should be all right. I know I was in there. So there we go. So that part's done. Also going to check their feet. Since I've got them on the stand, might as well. 
the nigerians are great um their feet usually aren't too bad it's only been about a month since i trimmed her hooves so she shouldn't be too bad but also with the mud sometimes it can be interesting so if you look she's got a little bit of growth not too much but there's that mud that's all caked in there that's why we are really trying to get this mud situation fixed so you just go along you want their hoof the bottom part that they're walking on to be parallel with the top part of their hoof so that's what we're going to work on real quick i've also got to be careful not to go too deep give her some meat yeah she's out of her grain she's a little piggy so we're gonna give her some hay to calm her down a little bit this particular stand is outside and with all the rain it's pretty slippery so i don't want her falling off of it settle down she normally is not this jerky when it comes to doing her feet Calm down, Maybelline. I don't want to stress her out too bad here. Or mocha, I mean. You just kind of want to go at it slowly. You can always take a little more, but you can't, you can't put it back. So if she stops moving, you can see where I can see the pink there. So I don't want to go any deeper onto that hoof. So I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit. Settle down, sweetie. She is definitely more jumpy than usual. She usually stands here pretty good for me. Now, she did lose her plug about a week and a half ago. They sometimes can lose their plug up to two weeks prior to kidding, so that doesn't stress me out or worry me too bad. While I've got her up here, I'm also going to just go ahead and clean some of the mud off her feet. Oh, you're going to hurt your leg. <laughs> Settle down. I give her a <laughs> Normally, I'm done with her, but she's just being stubborn today. So if she keeps doing this, I'm probably going to stop with her feet because they're not too bad. But I don't want to stress her out too much here. Or have her hurt herself. This foot does need some attention, but... But she's, she's fighting too much, I think. I don't know. Come on, baby, settle down. She normally does not, and she, as you can see, she pulled her head out of the stand because she's just very unhappy and she's so tiny that she can pull right out. So I'm going to try to do her feet maybe a little later, let her calm down a little bit. You will notice too, she's very puffy, she's very swollen. So we are just counting down the days and hoping that she holds out and doesn't go too early. So we're gonna let her calm down. I'll get back to her feet in a little bit. I just really don't want her slipping on this stand and hurting herself. So we'll put her back and we'll get the next one. We've got our little latte up here. She's not quite so little. We are breeding mini Sonnens with her. So she was bred with Baxter, our Nigerian dwarf buck, and she's a Sonnen. She's a pure Sonnen. So this is her first freshening, freshening as well. We've got her udders coming in nicely. So we'll see. Her mother is a great producer. Her mom, I get two gallons a day off her mother. So it's pretty good for a goat. Um, she is due after Mocha. She's our next one to kid along with Maybelline. 
So she lost her plug last week. Um, so we know she's probably going to be, but she's not filling up. She's not anything like that. We definitely, she should not kid until at least two weeks from today, hopefully. Um, we aren't sure if she's going to be on the 145 or the 155. You know, they have that window. So we will see what she, when she actually does kid. Feel her ligaments. Her ligaments were kind of hard to feel before. She's getting rather squishy too, but you can still feel them. They're still there. A lot firmer than Mocha's, which they should be. So we're going to give her her shots as well and her selenium. She is a little piggy. She already ate all of her grain that she was given. So again, we're going to do the 2cc mark. Just a minute. And they love selenium. They like the taste of it. They just don't like that you're forcing something into their mouth. So again, I'm going to find some skin on her. She's pretty tight. She doesn't seem as wide, but she's also bigger than um, Mocha, but she's starting to get squishy up here, so the babies are starting to go down. Whereas before, she was really high. Don't squish too hard. But she's still pretty, I'd be surprised if she doesn't have at least two babies in here. She does not have much extra skin, but she does have a pocket back here. I'd say it's usually my go-to spot. Cleaning it with that alcohol. Pulling out another syringe. So one thing I didn't mention is I always pull back on the plunger a little bit just to make sure I'm not in a vessel or anything like that, making sure I'm not getting any blood in the syringe before I do push it. Forgot to mention that. Let's see if she'll be cooperative and let me do her feet. Her feet are not great. Um, they're a lot better than her mother's. So we purchased her mother when she was pregnant with Latte. And the stress of it, she kitted that night. And it was just a big thing. She was rejected. Um, I think because of the stress. So she was our bottle baby. We had to milk Elsa out and we bottle raced her. That's why she's such a sweetheart, I think. She follows you wherever you go. But her mother's feet aren't great. And you know, that's a genetic thing. So sometimes we get a little curvy, things like that. So, but we'll see if she's going to be calling and let me do her feet real quick. Calm down. Man, they are just antsy today, and this is so slippery, so I might have to let this all dry out for a day or so and then put them back on the stand to get them, get their feet done. But see, there's a little curvature on hers, but it's not bad. Still way better than her mother's feet. Her mother was beat up really bad in the herd she was in, and she had a lot of issues there, so... I don't know if that had something to do with it, if they just took poor care of her. It's okay. It's okay. Just straightening things out a little bit. She's kind of leaning into me, but she's being pretty good. okay and this moisture that they've been dealing with with all the rain and everything has not helped their feet any cannot wait until we get our new area done get them moved out of this mud 
really, really bad for their feet. They can get hoof rot. She's being much more cooperative than Mocha was. Okay, well, so I'm gonna finish her up. We've got five more goats to go. We're gonna go through, finish them all up, but that's gonna take some time. So thanks for watching this part and we'll show you some other stuff in a little bit that we're doing today. All right, so the goats are done. Got the brooder cleaned up. It's way cleaner in here. They're scratching out. We had thrown some feed down. They're scratching around for that. They've also got their food and water there, too, though. Turkeys are doing good. And now, off to clean the feed barn. All right, so I do this every time we get new hay. I always clean everything out, get all the empty feed bags out, sweep up all the old hay, get all that taken care of, pull out the couple old bales we have so we can rotate everything. So we'll get this cleaned up and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so it's looking much better in here. We're getting all the feed put in the containers because we've been having a mouse issue. We're getting the third bucket of our um, fermented chicken feed. So we use the flock raiser because we have ducks and everything. Uh, basically it's three days, you fill it with water, then you add more water the next day, and then the third day it's good to eat. It really is good for their digestive system, and they eat a lot less, so the feed goes a lot further. So we'll just take this over to the that spring. That turns into that amount. Yeah, this little bit of grain turns into this, which is about half a bucket. So if that tells you how much more, how much further your feed's gonna go. So we just take it over to the spring, add the water, and we'll show you what it looks like when we first add the water. That right there turns into that which then turns into this here which it's gross looking it's kind of nasty but we put it in the chickens love it um as i've mentioned in a previous video video we only feed them at night so we fill it all up and they will eat all of it in about a day or an evening and then when we empty that one we start another bucket so that's just kind of how we do it it helps our feed costs so it looks much better got everything swept out we usually just throw it in the goat girls um sleeping quarters they kind of they just use it for bedding because it's already been on the ground they won't eat it so one of those is already unspooled so it's going to be interesting when we get the hay so it's going to be really hard to move that bale but we'll get it all taken care of got all the feed containers filled up got them out of the bags gave the chickens their grit we did our fermented feed so we always leave one bag in here for our twine that we throw our twine into got our minerals put into a container for the goats so we are all set to go get our hay in a little bit all right we've gotten a lot of stuff done on the homestead and now we've got to go get the hay and uh the guy that we get the hay from he's got a bunch of chickens that he wants to show us so we'll be going through and doing that all right, just got done unloading all the hay. So now we're full-ish. This will at least last us a little bit. <laughs> Cannot wait till we can have a building that's big enough that we could store like a year's worth of hay and not have to continually go get hay. But at least we've got what we need. All right, so we replaced the bucket system with some new nesting boxes. Renee and Elizabeth made these. So we will see if they lay in them. They love this corner. I don't know what noise that was that was just coming out of Mocha. She's got an itchy back of her neck apparently. 
I'm really hoping that she holds on and doesn't deliver these babies before the 140 day mark because she is so swollen. All right, so the weather is starting to shift. It's getting pretty gray. We've got some storms moving into the area. Uh, so we're gonna have to get everything cleaned up and get ready for the evening. So like I say, supposed to get two more inches of rain tonight. So it's just gonna be a muddy mess. So time to get everything cleaned up and get in the house, make some dinner. And we'll see how the rest of the day goes. Hopefully we don't lose any power or anything tonight. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And we'll see you next time.